Good morning. The Cathedral of Our Lady of Victory welcomes all who enter our holy doors as we celebrate the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The sung ordinary parts of the Mass are found in the Missalette, beginning on page 189. The processional hymn is number 241, All Who Are Welcome, number 241. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, and Abel Mahala as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat, as he was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. He was following the 12th. Elijah went over to him and, drew, and threw his cloak over him Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah answered, Go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him, and taking the oak of your oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil, boil their flesh and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ has set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the love law is fulfilled in one statement. Namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh, for the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, when the days for Jesus being taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, Let the dead bury their dead. But you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him Jesus said, no one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. You, this Sunday, we again hear the words of Jesus, follow me. As Christians, 
We are all called to be his disciples and follow him, not half-heartedly or from a distance or with other attachments, but to follow him with our whole self, to follow him closely, not looking behind us, but solely on him. And Jesus does call us individually, every single one of you who are in this cathedral, who are watching on TV. Jesus calls all of us, saying, follow me. There are moments in our lives when Jesus comes to us and extends that invitation of discipleship. These encounters with the Lord differ from person to person, but I want to share with you one of the moments in my life when Jesus was calling me to follow him. It was Holy Thursday, 2003. I was almost 16 years old, and I went to an hour of adoration after the Holy Thursday Mass with my mother. As I was praying in front of the Blessed Sacrament, on the night when Jesus asked his disciples to spend an hour of prayer with him in the garden, I was moved to make a promise that when I turned 16 and could start driving in a few months, that I would sign up to spend an hour of prayer in front of the Blessed Sacrament once a week. The parish where I grew up in had a small chapel where the Eucharist, the consecrated host from Holy Communion, was placed in a monstrance, which is a vessel used in order to see the Eucharist in our prayer. We had many parishioners signed up to pray in front of the Blessed Sacrament for one hour a week, and I was going to do the same. Now, every hour had to be filled. There always had to be someone there when Jesus is exposed in the Blessed Sacrament. And there was an opening uh, right around that time an opening late Thursday night, well really it was very early Friday morning, from midnight to 1 a.m. And that was the hour that I chose. So, for once a week, during those last two years of high school, I spent that hour, Friday mornings from midnight to 1, in prayer, in the silence, of that small chapel. During that time, I felt myself being drawn closer to the Lord in a way that I had never experienced before. I was learning how to listen to him in the silence. It was something new. Growing closer to Jesus in this way naturally led me to seek out what my vocation was. What was God calling me to do? How was I supposed to be, in particular, his disciple and answer that call that he asked all of us to follow him? Again, he planted that desire in my heart to say, I will follow you. And then in prayer, 
I realized that he was calling me to follow him as a priest. But I was afraid. It scared me to think that he wanted me to be a priest. But what about all the things I ha had my mind and my heart set on for the future? Schooling, a career, a wife, children. All these things would be taken away. I still wanted to follow him, but I didn't know how I could respond to that specific and radical call that he was asking of me. So I kept it to myself, and I tried to ignore it, tried to ignore what he had placed on my heart. Fortunately, he persisted and prepared me. And eventually, I responded to his call. But isn't this perhaps similar to the struggle that we all go through? The struggle of responding to that invitation to follow him? of responding to the call to follow him completely with our whole heart, holding nothing back. Everyone, all of you, have been given a particular calling, what we call a vocation. For most of you, it is to your marriage, to your families, to your children. And in the struggle to completely follow the call, for those of you who have received your vocation, isn't there still the temptation to hold back and not give yourself completely to your spouse? If you sacrifice everything for your spouse's well-being, Will something be taken away? Isn't there some fear in being so open? Is there a hesitancy to make your marriage the model of the sacrificial love that Jesus showed to us on the cross? And what about the young people? and those who have not taken their vow or their commitments? Is there hesitancy in searching for the specific path that Jesus is calling you to? Jesus calls you to follow him by the giving of yourselves, by the giving of yourselves in true marriage, in the priesthood, in the religious life, as a religious sister, a nun, a brother, as a single person consecrated to the work of God. Are you open to hearing what God has in store for you? Are you willing to accept the calling that he has given you? Are we willing to support each other in our various vocations? Are we willing to support our sons and daughters in their call? In my own life, back in high school, in the middle of that particular struggle with Jesus' call to follow him completely and without reservation, during that time, I heard some very profound words in a homily, a homily that I watched on TV. And I would like to repeat some of the, those words today. 
words which greatly inspired me. At the end of the homily for his inaugural mass as Pope, Benedict XVI said these words. At this point, my mind goes back to the 22nd of October, 1978, when Pope John Paul II began his ministry here in St. Peter's Square. His words on that occasion constantly echo in my ears. Do not be afraid. Open wide the doors for Christ. The Pope was addressing the mighty, the powerful of this world. But he was also speaking to everyone, especially the young. Are we not perhaps all afraid in some way? If we let Christ enter fully into our lives, if we open ourselves totally to him, are we not afraid that he might take something away from us? Are we not perhaps afraid to give up something significant, something unique, something that makes life so beautiful? Do we not then risk ending up diminished and deprived of our freedom? Pope John Paul II said, no. If we let Christ into our lives, we lose nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing of what makes life free, beautiful, and great. Only in this friendship are the doors of life open wide. Only in this friendship is the great potential of human existence truly revealed. Only in this friendship do we experience beauty and liberation. Pope Benedict continued, and so today, with great strength and conviction, on the basis of long personal experience of life, I say to you, dear young people, do not be afraid of Christ. He takes nothing away, and he gives you everything. When we give ourselves to him, we receive a hundredfold in return. Yes, open, open wide the doors to Christ and you will find true life. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father.
With hearts and minds turned to the Lord, we offer our prayers and petitions. For God's holy church, may we follow Jesus' example on our own journey to the new Jerusalem. We pray to the Lord. For peace in our world, may all refugees and immigrants find a safe haven in times of strife. We pray to the Lord. For all the suffering people of the world, including those who are served by the Peter's Pence Collection, may God send them a merciful witness of charity. We pray to the Lord. For all those who are faced with major decisions in their lives, may they call on the Holy Spirit to help them determine which path to take. We pray to the Lord. For our parish family, may we support one another and help carry each other's crosses during this Jubilee year of mercy. We pray to the Lord. For the family of Gladys Taglibu and Guadalupe Figueroa Cavazos, may they be consoled in their grief by the Lord. We pray to the Lord. For all the faithful that departed, and for the parishioners and benefactors of our parish, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For the needs listed in our parish intention book, and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Merciful Father, hear these our prayers and grant them that they be in accord with your holy will through Christ our Lord. Our offertory hymn, the hymn for the presentation of the gifts, is number 324. Love divine, all loves excelling. Number three, two, four.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are claimed. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things <clears throat> and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Brendan our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The P-38. 
peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to The communion hymn is number 232, We Have Been Told, number 232.
let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that, bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The recessional hymn is number 339, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, number 339. 